Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm a hands-on software architect and also the founder of developer2architect.com. I get a lot of questions and a lot of emails asking about architecture certification, whether it's worth it, what the process is all about. And so I decided, instead of answering all those emails and all those questions, uh, to devote this lesson, lesson number 58, to discussing architecture certification and then my viewpoint on whether it's worth it or not. There's two good places to go for non-product-based or non-company-based uh, kind of architecture certifications. The first, and my favorite, which I have these certifications, is the Open Group Architecture Certification. This is not TOGAF, and that's the Open Group Architecture Framework. That's a separate certification. Um, but this is the Architecture Certification. And I've provided the link there uh, so that you don't get confused about which kind of certification to get. Uh, the other one, which is non-product based, is the EACOE, -E. <laughs> uh, the Enterprise Architecture Center of Excellence. Boy, that's a lot of words. Um, and they offer three levels as well of enterprise architecture certification. Um, let me show you the open group uh, one because I have been through that process. Uh, and let me show you the process to go through. Um, the very first thing you do is actually download something called a nomination packet. Um, this is free uh, to download. And basically, there is no test for these. Rather, it's really filling out this nomination packet. I'll show you the process in a little bit, but I want to show you what this nomination packet is. You download it for free, and it's in PDF and Word format, and you start to fill it out. Uh, it contains several things. Um, first thing you have to do is fill out architecture experience profiles. You'll need a minimum of three, but three to four of these, which um, there is a template it has, uh, but really to demonstrate your experience as an architect. In other words, you can't get certified unless you have been acting as an architect in it at least three projects. And so you kind of fill out what the problem was, uh, what your architectural solution was, what the trade-offs were, the lessons learned, uh, what you would have done differently. And then most of it consists of short answer and essay questions um, in areas of people skills assessment, uh, what kind of mentoring you've done. So those soft skills are actually um, required um, for certification. Uh, the other thing is project management skills. There's an assessment area for that to actually fill in on short answer and essay. Um, business skills assessment to demonstrate uh, your knowledge of a certain business domain. You get to choose the domain, of course, but you have to demonstrate uh, proficiency in a particular domain of business. And certainly there's the technical architecture skills assessment. Um, there's also industry contributions or give back that you need to, to demonstrate. Um, uh, give back is an important part of being a software architect. And this could be in the form of speaking at user groups, for example, um, maintaining a blog. Uh, writing articles, that sort of thing. And finally, methodology skills assessment, uh, what your knowledge is of a variety of methodologies. Now, the process is as follows, everyone. Now, the first thing you do is you download and fill out this nomination packet. Uh, it can't be more than 50 pages long, which is my biggest challenge when I filled out both of mine for the regular and the master IT architect certification. That's what took so long. <laughs> um, but you submit it to the open group, and they do an initial review board. Uh, they check to see, do you have the profiles? Uh, are you missing things? Are you declaring something that you're not proficient in, that the minimum is level is proficient? And if there's things missing, you haven't done give back, you don't do mentoring, uh, they'll kick it back to you and reject it with a written statement about why it was rejected. However, if you filled everything out correctly and everything looks good, uh, they'll submit it to a certification board. And this is a face-to-face, a -face, in-person uh, certification board of other folks like myself who have been certified as well. And we'll fire off a lot of questions. There's usually three to four people. And it's almost like, quote, defending a thesis. <laughs> and if, um, if the certification board, uh, the orals basically, uh, find deficiencies or just not quite enough experience, they'll kick it back to you as well with a written report. However, if the certification does find that everything looks on the up and up, then you get certified. That's the overall process. Now, the question becomes, is it really worth it? 
um, I can tell you from having most of the architecture certifications as well as all the developer ones that I haven't received any additional monetary benefit as a result. So just because you're certified, um, please don't expect a raise in, in your salary. <laughs> um, there was one time uh, when I did require architecture certification for one particular project. So it can differentiate you and get you past some of those HR filters. However, here's my advice absolutely positively download the nomination packet. Start to fill it out. Now, the key point is it doesn't really matter if you're certified or not, but leverage that nomination packet to find out where your deficiencies really lie and what areas you need to actually focus on in your career as an architect. And what that's going to do, it's going to give you a delta so that you can build your own personal radar about what things you want to actually work on or steer your career towards to be able to, for instance, do more mentoring, get some experience with other methodologies besides just Agile or besides just Scrum, for example. Uh, maybe take a project that's doing Kanban or Lean, uh, and that's just in the methodologies. Maybe uh, business domain experience needs to be stronger. Um, this nomination packet, by filling it out, will actually help guide you in your career. And so whether certification is worth it or not, um, Filling out this nomination packet from the Open Group for free um, is a great way of really charting your career path. And once you've kind of satisfied most of those, then submit it for certification. So for more information, um, you can certainly go to uh, Software Architecture Monday, where all these lessons are housed. I do offer three uh, different private training classes that I have. One three-day Software Architecture Fundamentals. I have got a one-day Microservices class and also a one-day Analyzing Software Architecture class. So you can actually go to my training portion of my website to get more information about those classes. And also, I do speak at a lot of conferences, and some of those classes are uh, publicly available. And so you can find out where I'm speaking next by going to the upcoming events portion of my website. So this has been Software Architecture Monday. Again, my, my name is Mark Richards, and this has been Lesson 58, Architecture Certification. So stay tuned next Monday for another lesson in software architecture. Thank you so much.